Hello again, Scapers, and welcome to my guide to necromancy training. This, of course, will be Iron Man friendly, as are all of my guides. Let's jump into the requirements. Now, hard requirements, there are none. You could start this on a brand new account. Now, soft requirements, if you want to optimize your skill training, you're going to need 107 herb lore for Elder Overloads. You're going to need quite a few quests, Jack of Spades, the Vengeance Saga, the Nadir Saga, and actually that's about it for quests, as well as some various other levels and other skills, 85 crafting, 85 smithing, and 85 archaeology. Besides that, you need a ton of ashes and a ton of vials of water. That's really all you need to get started. The higher level your combats are and the more overloads you have, the better. To start off, we're going to be doing the quest, necromancy, and the tutorial. So do not spacebar through this because it tells you how to train the skill, an introduction to rituals, which are pretty much the entire skill, honestly, and it will also direct you as to where to go next. After you complete the tutorial, you'll be level 5. And then from level 5 until level 20, we're going to get trolls, but make sure you stop by to pick up your prayer. As you level up through trolls, you're going to unlock more and more abilities. Make sure you read what they do, put them on your bar, and just keep killing trolls all the way to level 20. Once you hit level 20, you can complete the Killy Rogue quest. This will teach you how to upgrade your weapons and armor. Now, the upgrade process is very simple. You take your tier 20 and you upgrade it to tier 30, and you take your tier 30 to tier 40, etc. You have to do this every step along the way. Once you unlock the ability, you don't necessarily have to make the armor right away. Personally, I stuck with Ghost Hunter until tier 70 power armor that was augmented. And that worked fine for me. I just upgraded my armor all in one setting. Now that you're level 20, you can upgrade your weapons from tier 1 to tier 20. And upgrading your weapons is a really, really good way to increase your damage and accuracy. And necromancy damage scales with your accuracy, so it's two birds with one stone. After you upgrade your weapons to tier 20, do the City of Um easy tasks. You cannot use the lamp on necromancy. It's currently under an embargo for a few more months. But the Tome of Um gives you some really good rewards. So make sure you get this and do this as soon as you can at level 20. After you hit level 20, you completed the task set and you upgraded your weapons. Personally, I chose to ignore armor and just use hybrid armor until level 70 necromancy. If you don't have any hybrid armor, then yes, get some necromancy armor and you'll upgrade this with your weapons every 10 levels. Ghost Hunter is really, really good for this skill. A lot of the things that you kill are ghosts. If you don't have that, just go with the necromancy armor. From 20 to 24, you're going to be killing things. Honestly, I would just go back to trolls. It's only four levels. It should be very quick. At level 24, you're going to complete the Rune Mythos quest. And after you're done with that quest, go and kill some more things until level 30. And you guessed it, every 10 levels, we're going to upgrade our weapons and armor if you're making it. Every 10 levels, you'll be getting sort of a mini quest slash slayer assignment kind of thing. This one is super, super simple. You either go kill 25 trolls or you do three lesser communion rituals. Either of these are good options. You'll be doing plenty of rituals. They're both pretty quick. Do one or the other and then upgrade your weapons. And then we're going to move on. At this point, if you haven't already, you can move on and kill things that are not ghostly trolls. Good luck finding a world right now. It's hell out there because every mob in the entire game is being camped, which is a good thing that we have this many players, but a bad thing that you really can't find any worlds to do anything. What I personally did from level 30 pretty much until 60 was killed Enkus in my personal Slayer dungeon. That does require 99 Slayer and 5 Enku souls. So if you don't have those, you can go find an Enku world if you want. Go hop a hundred times. Best of luck to you. You can also kill other things. They don't have to be Enkus. That's just what I decided to kill. The next few levels are really, really straightforward. From level 30 to 40, you're going to kill things. And then at level 40, you're going to do the Kilia tasks again and upgrade your weapons to tier 40. 
Our tier 40 tasks are to kill 50 undead souls or to perform some lesser rituals. Again, both of these are good options. I would personally do the rituals just so you get more experience and figure out for yourself how these work as well as the upkeep for your rituals. You also are going to need a meat pie. Fortunately, you can buy this from the Sears Village pub. After you upgrade your weapons to tier 40, we're going to be training this time until level 46. At 46, we can do the Vessel of Harbinger quest. And after that, then you go back to training until level 50. As you probably guessed by now, now that we're level 50, we're going to be doing Kelly's tasks to be able to upgrade our weapons to tier 50. The tasks this time are also pretty straightforward. You will need either 75 demons killed, which could be any kind of demon, lesser demon, greater demon, ripper demon, anything with demon in its name should count. Or you can do 10 lesser communion rituals. Either one works, just make sure you do one of them. You're also going to be needing an apple pie and a pair of necromancer's flippers, which means you'll need to be killing mogers and they need to be killed with necromancy, otherwise you don't get the drop. This also means that you need to complete the Moger mini quest, and if you have the Legends quest complete, great, you can buy an apple pie. After you upgrade your weapons to tier 50, then you are going to be getting 400 souls. Now this part gets a little bit more complicated. At this point in time, you will only have access to the lowest tier communion rituals. You probably have no idea what I just said. Let me explain. This is the complete necromancy ritual site that you will not have until level 90. There are three different tiers. There's the one that you get right after the tutorial, at level 1. There's the one that you get at level 60, that would be tier 2. And this one that you get at level 90, that is tier 3. So, as you level up your skill, and you upgrade your ritual site, you will have access to both better rituals for better XP, better outputs, as well as more alteration glyphs. Now, at this point, you don't even need to worry about alteration glyphs. Not until level 60. We'll get over there when we get there. Here, at level 50, we'll have a tier 1 ritual site. We're jumping into this now so that we can complete the medium tasks. In order to do that, we'll need 400 souls to upgrade our talent tree. This is a handy little calculator created by Chuchi? This person. Shout out to them, even though I can't really shout you out because I can't really pronounce your name. Um, thank you for making this calculator. If you'd like to make a copy of your own, I'll leave it linked to the description. Thank you so much for making this calculator for me. I would if I had any idea how to use Excel. I'm sure at some point a calculator like this will be added to the wiki. As of now, there are none. So. We need to be getting 400 souls, not lesser necroplasm. We are going to be doing lesser communion. 400 souls. Now, we don't have any multiply runes because we're level 50. We are using white, sorry, basic ritual candles. Six durabilities. Don't edit this. Yeah, don't, don't adjust this preset. Um, this thing is going to break. So, we are going to be using the highest tier bones that we have. If you have Wyvern Bones, click Wyvern Bones. If you've been fortunate enough to get some mementos already, then use those because they're worth more souls. If you have 100 Wyvern Bones, perfect, that's all you need. Over here on the right side, this is the supplies that we're going to need. You'll need 187 basic ink, 67 candles. You can buy these from the general store. That's pretty much how this calculator works. and. Again, I'll leave a link in the description. You can mess around with it a little bit if you want. If there is ever going to be a calculator like this on the wiki, I will put it in, in the pinned comment below as well as any changes going forward. So now we're doing rituals. If you have wyvern bones, it will be 100 of these. And then you're done. For now. Um, these random events that I have playing in the background here, you're going to want to interact with them for a lot of XP. This scales with your level, so there's no way you're going to be getting the same XP rates as I am at level 50. That's kind of not how that works. But you're definitely going to want to interact with these random events 
I will explain more of these later. For now, just do your rituals. Assuming you have wyvern bones, it will be 100 of these rituals, which should take you a little while. And then when you're done with that, you'll have your 400 souls, so you can upgrade your talent tree. After you do that, we're going to be doing the City of Um medium tasks. The text here is super small. Hopefully you can read it. Um, the links are going to be in the description. There's going to be a lot of stuff in the description, so navigate to there. Complete the tasks. It's going to be well worth it. The rewards are fantastic. There's only mediums. As we get more updates to the skill, I'm sure we'll get a hard and elite diary also. You can complete these at level 50. I would highly recommend to do them at level 50. That was a lot of things to be doing at level 50, so hopefully you're still with me. From level 50, after you've done your task sets, and after you've done the City of Um medium tasks, then we can go back to training, and we can go until level 60. And 60 is where you hit the wall. First thing we do at level 60 is we go back to Killy. Now that you have the medium tasks, you have unlimited teleports to go say hi to her. Fantastic. Good, good time saver. So, we need to be killing Ankus for an Anku residue. We also need to be doing lots of greater communion rituals. I would not recommend the killing option on this. I would definitely go with the greater rituals because you're going to be needing to be doing a few hundred of these. To get the Anku residue, use the agitator on Anku while not in combat and while in MD. Do this a couple of times. Eventually, the elite will spawn. Kill the elite, get your drop. You will also need a garden pie, which you cannot buy from any stores. It's a really simple recipe, make a garden pie. So you have your agitator, or sorry, your Anku residue, and you have your garden pie. And then you do 10 greater communion rituals, and then you're done. If you have overloads, or have a good way of boosting your necromancy to level 66, we're going to Wait on training combat, and we're going to be doing 3,000 souls, which is the same exact process as before, but now it's a lot faster. If you do not have any way of getting your necromancy to 66, go back to combat and come back here when you are level 66, actually. But if you are 60, you can use overloads or extremes to boost. Whether you're level 66 without boosting, or you're level 60 and going to boost, on screen now are the total number of materials you will need to get up to 3,000 souls. I would recommend stopping at 3,000 and not going to 4,500. If you want to go up to 4,500, it's not a bad idea. You'll be getting some upgrades to make your combat XP faster, but you'll be needing to do more rituals. The calculator I have on screen is just going from 400 to 3,000. So if you're going from 400 to 4,500, your materials are going to be different. Feel free to use this calculator. That part is going to take you quite a bit of time. Just be patient and know that this is the worst part of the skill. After you have that done, then you're going to go back to killing things until 65, if you're not already at that level, and then you're going to be doing the Spirit of War quest. During this quest, you'll be fighting an easier version of Hermit, and you only have to kill him once, it should be extremely easy no matter what level you are. Immediately after you finish the Spirit of War quest, go and do that old Black Magic quest, which the requirements are on screen. And after that, we're going to be training by killing things up to level 70. And you guessed it, at level 70, we're going to be doing the same exact process. We're going to go do Kelly's tasks and upgrade our weapons to tier 70. Eventually, most players will end up getting both the tank and the power armor here. You only have to do one of these for right now in order to upgrade your weapon. Personally, I would go with power armor. It's very quick to do. It's five giant mole kills and five calphite queen kills. It does take a little while with tier 60 accuracy, but then you have tier 70 accuracy after you upgrade your weapons, and then you can get some armor also. Completing that old black magic quest means you've killed quite a few of Hermod already, and you probably have a couple of plates. I would recommend that you have five plates and your drumsticks, whatever comes last. Just make sure you have both. Upgrade your gear until level 70 power armor, and then nothing after. Don't 
don't upgrade it again until you have level 90 with some multiply runes where you're going to need a lot of curl KC and a lot of subjugation. You can also now augment your weapons and armor, and when you upgrade them in the future, they'll keep their perks and they'll keep their invention level, and it's fantastic. Thank you Jagex for finally making a system that makes sense. Now that you have tier 70 weapons and tier 70 armors, complete the fight kiln with necromancy. You can hybrid this if you want, you can use the uh, toggle armor and the ring for a lot of damage reduction. It shouldn't be too difficult for you with tier 70 accuracy and damage, so you should be able to complete this. I'm not judging anyone if they can't complete it at this point in time, you can always do it later. And if you don't have the Zuck Stone, then you can probably just skip it altogether. After you've done all that, you've upgraded your weapons to tier 70, your armor to tier 70, you've gotten your drumsticks, you have at least 5 plates, well obviously to upgrade your gear to tier 70, you've done that already. Then go back to training however you want until 75. You can even kill this boss, Hermod, until 75 if you want. Um, personally, I would wait until you have higher tier weapons and armors, just so it speeds that process up. You will need 29 plates, uh, plus the one from the quest, so 30. So that's 290 KC because the drop rate is 1 in 10 for a plate. Confirmed. So however you want to do it, get up to level 75. Then complete the Tomes of the Warlock quest, requirements are on screen now, and then go back to killing things until level 80. At level 80, both of these options are decent. I will say it's a little bit more difficult to kill next with tier 70 accuracy and damage and no aura, but it's still doable. You can duo, you can trio, you can have a partner dart for you, but you just need to make sure that the most amount of damage dealt is with necromancy. The darts still work. I don't know why that's a thing. It's just a thing. I don't know. Just kill next five times and then queen black dragon five times or do the tank armor route. Your choice. If you're going for trim, you'll have to do both anyway eventually, so good luck. Now you have the ability to upgrade your weapons and armor to tier 80. Do not upgrade your power armor to tier 80 right now. It is not worth it. Unless you were made of subjugation drops, then I guess go for it. But wait until level 90 and you have the multiply 3 glyphs to upgrade your power armor to tier 80 and tier 90. The difference between tier 70 and tier 80 is a lot less than the amount of Krill KC that you will need. So from level 80, after you upgrade your weapons, train again until level 90. And here we are, we've reached the promised land, level 90 plus, so we're gonna come back here and we're going to upgrade our ritual site to tier 3. And we're not going to leave here for the rest of the skill. Currently, rituals are the best XP in the game, I say currently, just in case they nerf these, these are kind of insane. The skill feels so much slower until you get to this point, and then it just takes off to the moon. Anyways, what I'm personally doing for the most efficient use of supplies and similar XP rates, I am doing the communion tier 3s. Even if you are using robust and powerful mementos, which you get from completing the random events here, you are still profiting mementos and I personally have not used a single bone since hitting 90, and I'm about to hit 106. So you're still profiting, so you need no bones. All you need is ink, and the biggest hurdle for ink would be gathering more necroplasm or gathering ashes. Doing this method is over 1.5 million XP per hour. Every single level gets a little bit faster, which is always nice. And you also start filling up your Well of Souls. So earlier, when I said to stop at 3,000, it doesn't hurt you because you're going to be getting more than 32,000 souls doing this method. At level 90, if you have Elder Overloads, you can boost to do 3 Attraction 3 Glyphs. The reason why this is important is because that will put you over 500% Attraction, which means that you will have access to the highest tier random events, which give you the most XP. Once you hit level 99 and you have a skill cape, you can put on multiply 2 on that skill cape until level 103, and then when you have level 103, turn it to multiply 3. That will eventually, it might take a little while because you're going for XP here and not maximizing your soul chance, 
Eventually you'll get up to 30k souls, and then at that point you can go do the final quest, Alpha versus Omega requirements on screen. Alright, so here we are. Here we have Lesser Necroplasm. With my, um, I guess it's completely min-maxed, honestly. I have 10 of the Greater Flaming Skulls as my light sources. Uh, the only difference is they take a lot longer to deplete, which means you're spending less time repairing. I have three speed threes, just so the ritual goes quicker. I have all of my other alteration glyphs on multiply two. The reason why it's multiply two instead of multiply three is because the upkeep is significantly easier. The lesser necroplasm is what you're making, and you're making about 60,000 of these per hour pretty easily. Um, and really all you need is the basic ink, which you can buy from a general store, and then the regular, which you just get lesser necroplasm plus ashes. And if once you have 99, you set it to multiply 2 again, so you get more supplies. And when you have 103, set it to multiply 3. Don't worry if you don't have the Greater Flaming Souls, you'll get them eventually from just doing the higher tier rituals with higher soul attraction. Again, this is well over 60,000 Lesser Necroplasm per hour. It's actually insane, and personally, I'm choosing to just ignore the events and click every 20 seconds until I need to repair things. But if you get a sparkly one or the Goot, Ghoul, and you're paying attention, you can click on it for a nice XP reward. It's still over 200,000 XP per hour. I know mine says 150k because I was setting up and banking. But this is definitely the way to go. Like, these rituals take 18 seconds, and I am already getting well over 500 every single time. So, all we have left is to gather more Necroplasm, which I just showed you the best way to get at least the lesser. The other tiers should be following the same process, just you can't get as many output per hour because you need um, more glyph space, so less multiplies. All that you have to do is gather more ashes, and the best way to do that is as follows. Teleport to the game's necklace and bird of rot. If you don't have the bird of rot teleport, then, well, just run to Cannabis Lodestone. Run, run from Cannabis Lodestone or Barrow's um, boss encounter. Jump over the fence here. And this does require the Haunted Mind quest. If you don't have it complete, you're going to have to go fight for some Abyss creature spots. We're going to enter the cart tunnel here. And we're going to go all the way to the other side of the cart tunnel. Going through here. Sorry, it does take a little bit to get to this spot, but once you get here, it's well worth it. We're gonna go climb down the ladder here. And then climb down the other ladder over here. And we're gonna sneak past this card here. And we're going to follow it south. Head into this little groove here and wait for it to pass you by again. Climb down the ladder, and here we are. We've made it. Now, we're going to pick up the glowing fungus. Not that one, because you can't reach that. Okay, and then you switch to it, an action bar, and you put it on your action bar. Drop the glowing fungus. Look at that. It turns into ashes. With the grace of the elves inside of the borders, when you pick up ashes, they go to your bank. I have not done the math on how quick this is. I believe, if you were tick perfect, it's 3,000 per hour? This is, looks like it's one every one second, right? Which would be a, three, about 3,000 per hour. Either way, there's next to no competition here. Just make sure you actually have area loot open and you're pressing spacebar occasionally. And uh, that's the best way to get ashes, with little to no competition. You're just going to need quite a bit of porters and a Grace of the Elves. Uh, you don't need to have a Grace of the Elves, but it definitely is a lot easier, especially when it you know, has the uh, up to up to 2,000 kind of the porter charges if you have a Dark Onyx core, or 500 without. It's a lot better than um, equipping a sign of the porter every the maximum amount, 80 or so. But yeah, this is the way to go for Ashes, and it took me not even three minutes to set this up. Again, you do need the Haunted Mine quest, otherwise 
you have to kill abyss creatures. And then picking up the ashes is the same way. Grace of the Elves with Porters is the way to go. And that's it. That's the whole skill from 90 plus, is to collect ash, collect ink, and then uh, do rituals. That's it. So there we have Necromancy on an Iron Man in under 30 minutes. Look at that. The skill came out three days ago, but it's already kind of been solved. There are other rituals. There are other rituals, excuse me, that you can be doing for more XP per hour. The greater pure essence one is more XP per hour, but you delete all your pure essence, so I would recommend against it. Besides that, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below or PM me in game. If there are any minor changes, I will post them in the pinned comment below. If there are any significant changes, I will likely just make a second video. Thanks as always for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. Good luck on your necromancy training. I put a lot of effort into this video and I gave up my rank on the high scores, so please leave it a like if this was at all useful for you. Thank you. And until next time, take care.